Irina asks. Ksenia Yevgenievna, could you please tell us if atheism is a religion? If it is, what are the gods of atheism called? And if not, to which egregore does it belong? Atheism is a very interesting phenomenon. Generally speaking, atheism denies gods, all gods in principle. It denies gods as system-forming forces. An atheist believes in the one and only system-forming force, which is the human mind and everything related to its possibilities. Therefore, if atheism can be called a religion, it is a religion of the God-man, where man himself becomes a god. He doesn't rely on the experience of other gods. He treats them as historical phenomena. If we are talking about which egregorial layer it belongs to, it is most likely the layer of professional egregores, the layer of professional egregorial systems. In fact, this is what we are likely to come to when the concept of God and the concept of man merge into one. Meanwhile, the doctrine of atheism, which denies the existence of gods, has a bad reputation. Why is that? Because it implies a limited view of oneself. When a person denies the god within himself, he is actually denying the connection with his own god. When a person establishes a connection with his own god, atheism for him takes a slightly different form. It is no longer a denial of gods, but a denial of the one God for all people. And I don't think that the right term has been coined yet. But I'm sure it will come. It may be called homotheism, humantheism, or just humanism. Who knows, but this understanding will come very soon. Let me repeat, the total denial of gods is a stillborn child. You need more, you need to feel the God within yourself and never impose it on the environment as the only possible God. Otherwise you'll be called schizophrenic. You will know your own God, He will know you, and that will be enough, everything else will come as a result of your synergy, as a result of your unity. And your neighbor, having found his own God, will unite with him and that would be enough for him too. He would never try to impose it on anyone, your God will give you results and those results will be a projection of both of you. That's what will happen. People have to come to this understanding, and they will, perhaps not in this generation, but certainly in the next, because it is true, because it is natural, because there is nothing groundless, false, or malicious about it. Dishonesty begins when one neighbor says to another, you know what? My God is cooler than yours, so come on forget your own God and accept mine. And that is unfair, that is despicable and should never happen. But we have to come to that understanding ourselves. When respect for the God of your neighbor, the God of your friend and the God of your relative, is the same as respect for your own God and these are interdependent things. This is the motto that we study in our general theory of magic course and in the rune department. It is the motto of the future reality. I'm not a God if you're not a God. So if I don't see God in my friend and I don't see what their connection is, then I'm giving my friend the right not to see God in me and not to see what our connection is. And that's fair enough. But if I were to impose my own vision of what their connection should be, by analogy with my own, which is of course much cooler, I would be committing a real crime. 
And in the future it will be considered the greatest crime to convince someone that they are what they are not. Sooner or later we shall arrive at such a system of humanism, in which a careful attitude towards the contacts of other people with their gods will guarantee that the contact with one's own god will become stronger and better. But if you just show inaccuracy, violence, wrong view, or try to impose your understanding of how it should be, the effects will immediately show you that your connection with your force has suddenly for some reason become thinner, suddenly for some reason has gone. And, in order to form such a non-atheistic system, we have to work very hard on ourselves and have a lot of knowledge. We need to know both mythology and history, we need to know how it was and when it was different. We need to know how it was when monotheism was literally imposed by fire and sword and how much grief it caused. And we need to know what we must do to never let it happen again. We need to teach it to our children so that they can teach it to their children and make this process as natural as life itself.